Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk through how to pass your Squarespace website that you have completed for a client, how to pass it on to the client so they feel equipped, they get the site and they get up and live as soon as possible. Right before we begin, if you get any value from this video, I would so appreciate if you hit that like button. When you hit that like button, it lets me know that you got value from this content. Okay, so let's preface this a little bit and get us in the right frame of mind. So at this point of the project, you've probably built out the designs, you've gone back and forth with the client on maybe one revision or two or something like that. And now you are ready to pass the site onto the client. This is a really important part of the process that if done poorly can become a little bit confusing for everybody on board and it might delay your final payments. So I am going to be speaking from the goal of making sure that once the site is finished, that you pass it on to the client. They may not be launching the site for 30, 60, 90 days, but that's on them. Obviously, you could help them when that comes up. But you do want to make sure that they are not sitting there thinking that they can just call you at any moment because they haven't launched yet in that time period. So maybe 30, 60, 90 days later, maybe right before they launch, they might say, mm, I kind of want to change the homepage now. But you've already gone through revisions in the whole process. So this really helps with scope creep. And this follows one key principle that I always talk about, which is you want to use the client's motivation to your advantage in the healthiest way possible. Nothing weird, nothing off, but you do want to use their motivation to make sure the process moves smoothly. I have never had a client delay payment because the process itself takes care of that. And if you don't know me, I've worked on hundreds of Squarespace websites. Okay, so let's begin. Now the site is done. It is ready. You just need to pass it on to the client. Before I give access to the site, there's a few things I tell the client. Number one, I let them know that we are ready to take the next steps. Even if the site is not fully complete, there's a few final details we're going to touch up together, or maybe I'll have them touch up. I let them know that this step requires that we complete final payment before moving forward because I will be giving ownership of the site to them. Now, there's a few things to consider. In Squarespace, this is a two-step process. So I'm fast forwarding just a bit, but we're gonna go back and forth a little bit. Let's say I have received final payment. Now, I will give admin access to that client, whatever email they provide, and then once they confirm, then I will give them ownership. So it is a two step process, but I count it as one big step. I do not give access to the back end of the site until the client makes final payment. This really works on the client's motivation because they really want to get in there and see how it works. And also they want to take ownership and take the next step, regardless of when they're launching the site, which this leads us to the next point. I always offered training. You don't have to offer training, but training is a great way to teach them some basics of how to change text and images and videos and create new sections. And from there, it also ensures that they don't destroy the site on accident the day you pass it on to them. Now that really happens, but you do want to teach them how to get around. And a pro tip here is to use a tool like Loom or use Zoom and record it. That way you can have the entire footage ready to give to them so they can access it in the future. If they forget, well, they have a video that they can reference at any time. And if you really want to go pro pro level, create an entire course on the basics that you always get asked. How do you change a favicon? How do you change this? How do you change that? Create videos based on those items and then just have it in a course format so they can access all of that content. Or alternatively, you could send them to our YouTube channel and we have a whole set of videos that are great for beginners on Squarespace who need to make small adjustments to text, background colors, background images, images on the site, things like that. Check out the link below and you'll be able to access that playlist. So let's recap a bit. You have completed the main edits. You've sent the client backend access to the site because they've given you final payment 
From there, you now take on the next step of training. You've planned training and you've done training and you sent them training. What happens after that? At this point, there are a few key things that need to happen in a specific order. And I do have a video training video that walks through these three steps specifically. But these are the three things you want to keep in mind. Number one, you want to make sure you start the subscription for the website. Do this before you connect the domain. If you have a live site, you want to do this before you connect the domain, because if you connect the domain and you have not paid for the subscription, the site will still have a password on it. You don't want that to happen if it is already a live domain that you are moving. If it is a brand new website, I would still follow this model, but it's less critical that you do this step first. So again, the first step is pay for the subscription. 80 to 100% of clients are going to probably be on the business plan. I think I have a promotional link down below. You probably already have one, but I think I have a promotional link down below that you could access as well to get a discount on that. Next, following that, you want to then set the site public. Again, if you're not going public right away, it's okay to just keep it password protected, but that would be the next step. Following the third step would be connecting the domain. Connecting the domain is something I wish I could teach in two seconds. And sometimes it takes two seconds and sometimes it takes 20 minutes and sometimes it takes two hours. It's unfortunate, but it is just how the internet works. Your domain needs to be connected to Squarespace via the DNS records. There are five records. All five records need to be there. Old records need to be deleted. And then from there, you are ready to go live. From there, a few things will happen naturally. At this point, we've paid for the site, we've set it public, and we've connected the domain. What's gonna happen after that is your SSL security is gonna be created. It's gonna be built so that your site is secure. If you're doing e-commerce, you definitely wanna make sure that this gets set up properly from the beginning. If you're not doing e-commerce, it's important that it's set up as well. Not as critical, but it's nice to have. Following, let's talk about SEO. There are a few things you probably should have done actually by this point. It just depends on where you're coming from, if it's a new site or if you're transferring a site or whatever that is. But let's talk a little bit about SEO. The first thing I'll say is go make sure that Google Analytics and Google Search Console are set up. This is really important to tell Google that your site is live and to submit your sitemap via Google Search Console. And like I've mentioned a few times, I have a ton of free content about this that you could find on our YouTube channel and or you could go to our website, which you'll see the link down below and you could access. We have services that help you do this, but make sure Google Analytics is set up and make sure Google Search Console is set up. If you are transferring a site and let's say the old site had 20 pages and the new site only has 10. Well, you're going to want to do something called 301 redirects. Look into it. Squarespace has a ton of resources. It's actually quite easy. You just got to make sure you set those up on the back end. So let's just take a few steps back because I covered a lot of information there. This really depends on the type of project you're doing with a client. But the more you charge, the more you could offer. These are all things you could benefit from in the process, depending on what you want to do. The Google Search Console part, you cannot do until you connect the domain. So it's worth keeping that in mind. But let's just talk about a few things. First, I always have the client pay for the site. I've always had people ask me. I remember when I first started out, it was the first concern I had. And once I did the first site, I never worried about it again. The client always pays for the site. That's a clean, simple, easy way to set it up because once you put your card information in there, even if the client reimburses you, your card information is saved in there. That gets complicated. Don't do that. Allow the client to pay for the site. Also, you're working with their motivation again. Next, setting it public is two clicks. So either you could do it or the client, you could teach the client how to do it. Connecting the domain, if it's with GoDaddy, is really easy. With Google domains, is kind of easy. And everything else requires a bit of work. So I would highly recommend that you offer that as part of your service because if you don't do it for your client and your client's already paid you for a lot of this design work, it might get a little bit complicated. Learn how to connect domains and it actually will benefit you a ton long term to even understand how all that stuff works. Next, the SEO part. That's something you can charge for. So if the client isn't paying you that well, or it's a smaller package and you offer in a different package, you can decide if you do the work or not. But basically at that point, you are ready to take the client live 
and pass the project completely. So once you've done that Google Search Console, you can send them an email, say, congrats, your site is live. I love sending that email. Congrats, your site is live. You can go check it out. Here's your domain and you're good to go. And from there, the client is now in full control. They've made final payment. You've handled all the work and you have completed the project. It is a clean pass off. So that way you can move on to whatever next project you have. Now, let's talk about a few anomalies. Let's say the client is not launching the site for a few weeks. My recommendation, do as much as you can up into a certain point and then let the client know to inform you when they will launch with one to two weeks of a heads up and then you guys can plan the final steps. So if they are really big and eager to make sure the domain moves on a specific day in six weeks, tell them to inform you about that day and then you just plan it in your schedule to move the domain, set up Google Search Console, Google Analytics and go from there. Another anomaly worth mentioning, let's say they're moving from Squarespace 7.0 to 7.1 or basically to Squarespace websites. You do want to go into their old site and cancel the renewal. If they've been charged recently, let them know to contact Squarespace support and they could actually get a refund if it's a yearly charge. If it's a monthly charge, just cancel the renewal and let it expire accordingly. And that's it. That is the process of passing a project to a client where you feel confident, you don't tie your credit card information into it, you get paid on time and the client launches their site, which is so exciting. So if you got value from today's video, please hit that like button. The like button tells me that you got value from this content. If you have any other questions about Squarespace in general, we make new videos every single week. So first of all, consider subscribing, but at the same time, consider dropping a comment and I will get back to you. I reply to all comments. With that, have a great rest of your week wherever you are in the world and I will see you guys next time. Peace.